A Singapore Red Cross is making a public appeal for funds to help communities in China affected by the novel coronavirus. The government will be contributing seed money towards that public appeal. Business communities like Singapore Business Federation and Business China will also rally their members for donations. Now, the funds will be used to deliver assistance, such as procuring medical supplies. For more, we're joined in the studio today by the CEO and Secretary General of the Singapore Red Cross, Benjamin Williams. Welcome to the studio. Good to see you here this evening. Thank you for having me. All right, so this, uh, this assistance that Red Cross is giving, put it into context for us. Which communities are worst affected in China? We know that this novel coronavirus has spread to almost all provinces. So when we uh, have made this public appeal, it is for communities in China as a whole who are affected by the virus. Of course, the epicenter of the outbreak is in Wuhan province. And for the time being, we will focus a lot of our response in Wuhan. Uh, but going forward, uh, many of the other provinces, as you correctly point out, are also fi facing dire shortages. Mm. And the funds that we raise, hope, we hope, will be able to uh, provide supplies that are badly needed, especially in the hospitals, but even among the public. We have an indication of what they need. They've talked about masks, the goggles, mm. uh, the hazmat suits as well, protective gear. Mm. Uh, but we also know there's this lockdown roads. Many of them have been blocked and so on. What do they need now and how are you going to reach them with these supplies? Okay. So uh, there are many challenges uh, in this issue. Uh, first of all, there, there are shortages, and not only shortages within China, but also shortages globally. And supplies are hard to come by, especially when you talk about the huge numbers that are needed in the context of China. Uh, we are working very closely with the International Federation of the Red Cross uh, and our other movement partners. So in fact, our response is going to be coordinated both from KL, mm -hmm. which is the Asia-Pacific headquarters of the Federation, as well as we will have a man in Beijing uh, coordinating with the movement partners on the ground. So we, we, what we are going to do, in fact, is to mobilize the resources of the whole movement in order to help provide these supplies. Mm -hmm. uh, not forgetting that within China, uh, one of the biggest network is with the China Red Cross. Mm -hmm. And they have 17 uh, million, 1.7 million volunteers throughout the country. And this is a very important network uh, which we can tap on, especially with regards to uh, the supply of uh, essential equipment. So you say you've got your man in Beijing, you're working with the China Red Cross as well. So far, in terms of this communication with Chinese authorities and, and just how you know, you're, you're going to be able to get this help to them, have you seen cooperation? How much has there been? Have they been very forthcoming? So let me clarify. Uh, we have not yet deployed the person in Beijing and KL. Uh, two of our staff, the director of our international services and one of the staff is now in KL, even as we talk, coordinating with the Federation as to how we can deploy and how we can uh, mobilize the resources uh, on the ground, as well as in terms of the distribution network. Are you anticipating any difficulties in, in getting that in your guys in basically okay so there are many challenges mm -hmm. okay uh, we are not talking in terms of putting a response team on the ground zero we are basically talking about the strategic deployment uh, to coordinate the uh, resources that are needed as well as the uh, distribution strategy mm -hmm. but uh, the important challenges ahead of us is uh, first of all securing the supplies and here we may have to work uh, both uh, within China as well as globally. Secondly is to uh, establish the supply chain. And here you talk about borders being closed and yes. you know, transportation and all that. And that's why the working with the Federation becomes very important mm -hmm. because they do have the connection with WHO. They do have the connection with the Chinese government. And we hope that that will smoothen the ride. But after that, once the supplies are within China, the next challenge is the distribution network. So these are some of the challenges we are going to face. But I must also add that supplies are just the first step because those are the immediate and urgent needs. But part of the Red Cross response is 
in China is also working about preparedness. Mm. So we want communities to be prepared so that they can help to prevent the further spread of the virus as well as know what to do if they are faced with an outbreak within the community, within the village. So this is also an important work of the Red Cross that the Singapore Red Cross will uh, be supporting uh, going forward. Certainly, knowing how to protect yourself is half the battle of, as yeah. we see this yeah. viral outbreak yeah. continue to evolve as it has been. Benjamin, thank you very much for coming into the studios and sharing that important information with us. And all the best with your efforts with the Red Cross and this uh, endeavour. And of course, the uh, Singapore Red Cross also works within the country. And, you know, we have our people advising and we hope that our blood program also keeps steady, uh, even in this time of crisis, because we still have blood needs. Thank you very much, Benjamin. We've been speaking there to the CEO and Secretary General of the Singapore Red Cross, Benjamin William.